Are you looking for trade plans on Euro USD, Pound USD, Pound Yen, USD CAD, US oil, gold, silver for the week and for the months of September? Well, you have come to the right place because I'm going to give you my personal opinion, my personal opinion only about what I think is going to happen in September and in this next week ahead. So join along. Trading Forex is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Whatever has happened in the past doesn't need to happen in the future. So whatever money you have invested today can be lost tomorrow. So use risk management and never invest money in a condo cannot afford to lose. Apart from that, my name is MBL. I'm a Forex trader, I'm a mentor, and I'm here to help you giving out my view of what I think is going to happen for next week. Isn't that a good idea? That is a very good idea because I'm going to give you my potential entries, potential stop loss and potential pro take profits. And by the way, last week I had made profits. The week before that we made profits. It was over a thousand combined pips on Euro New Zealand. Well, is that a good week? Okay, I think so too. So let's um, hop onto the charts and let's see what September might bring us. As we now have the Euro USD in front of us, I just want to make a couple of comments. One, I'm going to be live tomorrow at 19.30 GMT plus two here on YouTube. Please subscribe if you want to get notified by YouTube or just be there at 19.30 GMT plus two. The other part is I want you to succeed. So let's try to see if we can make you a bit more knowledge for the week ahead. That was only good English, but I'm not going to edit it out anyways. So, what's really the plan here okay so here we have the monthly pivot points what is pivot points the pivot points is the high and the low and the mean of the previous period okay so last week last month last day whatever it is okay so in this situation this is the buy zone and if they get a bullish trend they're targeting M4, which is this month going to be 2060. If you were a seller and thinking, oh, this is totally sellable, okay, then you're at least thinking, I'm going to take it up to this sell zone here and take it down to M1 at around 1460 as well, okay? So now we have 2060 and 1460 as targets. Okay, it all depends what are you, buyer or seller. So I'm going to tell you, but I'm a seller. I'm expecting a V shape for your dollar. I'm expecting it to fall down to central pivot and then up to back up to 1800 by the September. Is that going to happen? I don't know, but that's what I'm planning for. So what do I then need? I need tac tactical, tactical reasons. Okay, what do I need? I need a bearish trend. Do I have a bearish trend? Potentially. We have a new low. We have a pullback. And then a new, so that's on the four hour. And then the one hour we have, we have new low, new high, but lack of a higher high. So if price was here, I wouldn't be interested. But since price didn't really challenge this high again here, I'm definitely thinking, hmm, if this comes down, I am definitely going to change it. So I already have an entry here on Friday and waiting to sell it even more this week. So for this is my view personally, not investment wise, only for educational and how I think the market will have go. But how when it does in when is it invalidated, when it breaches this high, I would then have to look for a new entry around there instead. So if we're going to down to weekly take profit, no weekly pivots, then you can see that I said here is the time I would need to find a plan B. And this is my plan A, because this is a target for buyers. And when buyers actually take profit, price will then fall. And I'm waiting for price to fall. So either here or already here. So, and then I said 1460 and this next week, thinking down to 1580 this is just future support and resistance so if you are like what is happening here okay just follow along so what do i look for i've already sold here okay i would then want maybe either 
price going back up to that entry. Not what I want to see, but potentially. And then new low. I must have a new low. And then I pull back to this level at 1700. I will take it down to at least 1580. For one position, the other position, I will take down to 1460. I was marked target for the month. We shall see who wins. So I will take TP, two TPs, two orders. One here, one here, and see which one who wins out. And then, of course, if I go 50 pips in profit, I will do my stop loss to break even. But that's what I will have, so I will still have my stop loss up here if I, that hits. Okay, no worries. So I've given my entries, I've given my targets, I've given my stop losses. Is there any risk to this? Yeah, it can just, it can just doesn't bother. Okay. Um, it can also just come down to this zone here, which is really the risk and where our buyers should really looking for, look for. So that's 1670. So, as we now <laughs> basically just dance into 1670 for buyers, you are then looking up to 1820. Okay. That's what you're thinking. That is actually a very viable trade plan. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. And that's the only plan that you have this week. Buying here, no, I wouldn't. I would rather wait down to for 1670 or a new higher high. Okay. As we then venture into pound dollar. We have kind of a similar situation as the euro pound where we have the euro dollar where we have kind of a downtrend. This one is a bit more bullish. So what is happening here? It is Brexit. So Brexit can take it down. It can take it up just as in this area here. So it's kind of, yeah, I don't know, somehow. But this is really the resistance you're hoping for for this week and then you're going down to 24 yeah down to 124 okay and then apparently i have been hiding my prices i'm sorry but i've said them to you and i've written them down so 124 okay that's your target so then every day every week you are looking for pullbacks to short as long as you still have that trend, you're good. And V-shape, V-shape, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so down here and then back up. So by end of October, we are back up here. Okay, that sounds like a good deal for October as of all. So how do you then look for trade plans this week? Okay, we're going down, down to weekly. This is the sell zone. And then for this week, we're just looking at 127. So then you have two orders, one for weekly and one for monthly. Okay, cool, amazing. Then we would just do, yeah, okay, stop losses, true, above here, above this one. That would be a good place or above R1 would be an even better place, but I think that's a bit too far for you in terms of your reward and all those things. So that's 66, yeah, okay. Yeah, at least in this area here. Um, and then to your target, I've said that, what is your risks? Can this potentially be bullish? Yes. Can this be risky? Yes, because of Brexit can, and news can come out and you're like, oh, what happened? So you really have to be really specific, really clear about what you're doing, okay? Cool. So really entry up here, really shorting every possible potential opportunity as long as you have a bearish trend. Okay, I hope you know how to do a trend. How is a, that bearish trend? This is a bearish trend. This is no longer a bearish trend because this is now bullish and then it goes down again. So as long as you have lower lows and lower highs, you are still going down. We don't have that at the moment. That's why we have to wait a bit. Okay, cool. Uh, pound again. We have some of some of the similar situation where we have. I guess this is the top where you're like expecting this one to break maybe, but also if you are a seller, you are 
kind of in a good spot and then just waiting for this to come down here to 134 for the week stop loss above this here okay again you have brexit nothing to worry about yeah it's something to worry about and it's something that can all of a sudden just take your stop loss profits whatever it can do that and it looks like it's a new low it's not really a really new low comes back up again makes a new high in a lot of like wondering what is going on that is what happens when you are in a very volatile uncertain market which is pound at the moment so if you can stay away okay cool um pound yen yes is that for us for the sellers then for the buyers you're like okay if you then get a break higher you can look for the you can look for the pullback and then what is the target you might ask target for this month is back up to 143 uh, 144 143 so i would say 143 okay and then if you get lucky you can get 140 144 as well but if you are a seller in this market which looks to be fine by the way as long as you just have continuation you're still just at 138 pullback you are looking down to 130 oops that was wrong 130 Okay, so as long as you have a bearish trend, you're looking down to 130. Yeah, good. So, USD CAD. Um, I think. So, this is a bit different one because this looks almost like the Euro. Okay, but it's interestingly fair enough. So this could be like, yeah, but this is bearish. Is it really because this is redone by dollar dollar is really running this show so I'm really just saying this is support for it and for it to continue higher okay so for the month the monthly buy price as you could call it is 132 132.50 and target is 136 whoops 136 1.36 and I think that's the most viable plan and then up and then down and then back down to the same price at 133 give or take by the end of September at the end of October okay where's your stop loss stop loss should be at 50 pips or below here and um, take profit up there what is the risk for USD CAD I think the risk is a strengthening in the dollar Canada is still very weak has been weak, can continue to be weak until it kind of gets up on its feet again. I don't know when it will, but it might not soon. As for the COT report, which is the hedge fund, which is the big boys that are in the market for, um, for profits, they have taken profit on the longs on the euro. They have also taken some profit on the shorts, but still this one, is then more bearish than last it's supposed to be more bearish than last week so yeah down to the British pound for the British pound and the COT report they have been a massive short selling here and buyers taking profit so what is really happening right now there's a shift happening from long side to the short side as you can see here we have gone from 52% to 43%, which is 9% difference, and add on to the shorts. And now, last week it was more longs than sellers, now there is more sellers than buyers. A shift in pound dollar to the short side. For yen, we still have more buyers than sellers. And for this past week, we have now had, I would say, a massive take profit for longs, but also short urge to profit that means both are exiting the market well we're still on the long side and if there's more risk coming in i think maybe buyers will come in to the market again so still bullish still how i want pound yen to be but just have that in mind that it was large profit taking for lungs and that's why maybe 
the yen went up instead. So nothing much, nothing much on New Zealand. Status quo, give or take, a bit more, but yeah, nothing to report back to home. For Australian dollar and the CO2 report, we have more longs than shorts. But longs took profit last week. Interestingly, fair enough, and still a bullish, kind of a bullish market. But now it's less bullish than last week and more bearish than last week. So. Fair enough, interestingly enough. For the Canadian dollar, um, we are still heavily more short than long in this market. As you can see here, 65%. So that's why maybe the US dollar, Canadian dollar doesn't fall so much because even though dollar, US dollar is weak and it falls, it's not driven by the Canadian. It's actually contradicting. The Canadian because the Canadian actually is weak. So whenever that day comes when this changes, we have to be on the feet and we need to know. And we have to take it. For the for the US dollar, we still have more shorts than longs. We still have a 58% more than the buyers. But for this week's we have added longs to dollar. Mm -hmm. We have shorts taking profit. So it became more bullish this week and potentially also with Trump. This is before Trump getting COVID. So might get some more buyers in this area. For gold, we still have massive longs and we just added longs. We just took profit and shorts. I would call that a quite a significant move. So yeah, even more bullish than before. So up to 81% again. So really interesting. Really, really, really interesting. And by the way, by the, by the last two weeks, it's kind of equalized itself. So for gold, still bullish. Is it going to rise potentially because the dollar is getting stronger? Maybe not. For oil, we're still sitting in a market where it's very bullish. Um, we have Profits taking for buyers, adding shorts, so, okay. But also oil has been falling the past, past week, so that doesn't really, um, that really uh, makes sense. So for me, still okay, still it's cool, but to the downside, but that was expected, wasn't it? So with the backing of the central um, COT report, that would make the dollar rise, which is more buyers coming in. And Canadian was still very weak. So that would still make this pair um, rise. Okay, just have that in mind. That is support, that is going higher. For US oil, we have, as I said, falling, and you're wondering why did it fall there? Because I was a sell zone for the month of October. Sorry if I'm late to say that, but kind of was. So where do you think target is? 34. Okay, interesting. If you go on down to weekly, that is also down to 34, 34.70. That is your TP, okay? Interestingly, fair enough that you want this to fall and then you just have to take a pullback, maybe up to 38 and then short it again. There's no point of buying this. I didn't hold this, this here, so it's totally broken. Can this be a double bottom? Yes, it can. No worries, but the monthly view for me is down on this one and then back up. So it's just following my plan. Maybe I just told you to find a bit late, but hey, here you go. Um, what else? I yeah, okay. Bearish until one thirty four seventy, and then back up again. Cool. So stop loss is maybe fifty whatever points, dollars whatever in dollars, but yeah, five dollars I guess it is. Uh, and so really this is your entry point 
this is your entry point take those away and like wondering uh, does that look like good levels okay this one looks very good by the way support and resistance and this looks like resistance so yeah it is good levels so just wait for that maybe add a bell to say that that's the price you want to see and then you take it out for gold and we are seeing i'm seeing dollar bullishness so i think this is just coming up to to the sell zone for the month this is the sell zone for the month this is the aggressive sell price and take it on to 118 well 1800 and then back up again why dollar bullishness whatever reason why i don't know trump getting covid just is another reason it's october it tends to do so so potentially but that's only if dollar gets strong if dollar get doesn't get strong this is continue to go higher and up to 2000 okay and then you're just looking for pullbacks 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 but i'm thinking down and then if i'm wrong i'm wrong but i'm not going to sell it until i have a bearish trend okay do i have a bearish trend here no i don't um uh, i don't have a new lower low so I would want to see that before I start selling, if I were to sell gold. Okay, interesting. But if price comes down here to buy at 18.90, I wouldn't be too happy about that. I would rather be more happy with 18.73. That's a better price to buy. Okay, you're cool with that. Stop loss, whatever you want, <laughs> whatever you want, but have it at least down below this one and you if you can't afford that don't trade gold that's how easy it is it's easy life um yes i'm tilted to the downside that's where my entry should be and i'm just waiting for maybe monday or tuesday to for it to happen so join my discord channel if you want in the description below if you want to follow up on that one then we would do silver Silver is in the same position as gold, also tilted to the downside. And for the month, it is going down to maybe 19 before going up again. Same thing, that's what I'm looking for. Um, and it's kind of a range, so maybe it hasn't gotten enough sellers as it wants to, but definitely something that I'm really thinking about. So, lack of a new high after that is really worrying really worrying okay tilted and outside as long as we get a bearish trend i will do that do we have that now no okay potentially yeah. if it doesn't happen it will make a new higher high you catch the pullback if you're a buyer and then you take it up to 30. isn't that amazing so i will see you tomorrow at 19:30 pm gmt plus two which is Paris time. Okay. And then I will be happy to help you, maybe give you some more insights. I have maybe gone too fast in this video, go back. So yeah, I thank you for joining. Thank you for being here. And I'm deeply honored that you wanted to watch the video all the way to the end. Boom.